the Black Sea, at the edge of Europe. Surrounded by breathtaking coastlines, it has long been a hidden gem. European in the north and Asian in the south, this region brings together six countries that couldn't be more different. Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, Georgia, Romania and Bulgaria. What they do have in common is the wealth of the sea they share. It brings them tea, fish and wine. This corner of the world is exhilarating, full of contrasts and with a checkered past. Old traditions and bold strides into the future. the Black Sea and its bordering countries. Turkey's longest coastal line is 1,500 kilometers along the Karadeniz, the Turkish word for inland sea. The Black Sea stretches along Turkey's north coast. Fishing is just one pillar of prosperity in the region. The fertile backlands are also ideal for growing tea, hazelnuts and tobacco. Trabzon is one of the most important regional trading centers. With nearly 250,000 inhabitants, it's one of Turkey's largest Black Sea ports. Around 99% of Turkey's population is Muslim. Turkey has officially separated church and state since 1928 and still does today. In Trabzon, they mostly worship the god, football. The local team Trabzon Spor is internationally renowned. Today, they are having a friendly match for their fans in the newly inaugurated Medical Park Stadyumu. Football is Turkey's favorite sport. Large football clubs invest a lot in training the next generation. Trabzon has even had its own women's football team since 2007. When I told my family I was playing football, they thought it was just a phase that would pass, but it wasn't. Now, they've gotten used to it. When I was little, they thought it was strange that I played football, but they never really judged me. Now my parents know that I really want it and that I train hard for it. Professional football offers many other girls like Ceren Kuvet and Hilem Aydin a job prospect, even if the Turkish women's team hasn't qualified for a large tournament yet. But that's about to change. The female recruits practice tirelessly, several times a week after school. My friends, what have we forgotten? What do we do? Let's see more hustle. My female idol is Alex Morgan. I follow her on social media and I've watched lots of videos of her. Her game is strategic. She really plays like a girl, not at all like the men. Hilem and her teammates dream of a career abroad. But the young girls also love their home by the shores of the Black Sea. Their trainer knows that and rewards them with a long run along the beach barefoot. It's a welcome change to training on the field. Karadeniz'de olmak şöyle bir şey. 
When you're by the Black Sea, you never quite know what to expect. It could rain any second, and then the sun comes out and it gets hot. It takes some getting used to, but I'm happy by the ocean. Everything is natural, and that's beautiful. I couldn't live without the sea. This evening, the team has an important match with formidable opponents. Turkey is one of the world's five largest tea producers. About 250,000 tons are harvested here every year. But outside of Turkey, hardly anybody knows that because so much is consumed in-country, there is hardly any left over to export. In the past years, most farmers have switched to producing organic tea. Mehmet Demerge's tea is also pesticide-free. Good luck. Thank you. How are you? Everything all right? We're well. It sure is hot today. It'd be much more comfortable if it were cooler, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be better. It's always so hot right now. This heat has a great effect on the quality of the tea. Tea leavers prefer rain and humidity. They grow particularly well in the Black Sea region, especially in this part of eastern Turkey. Here it rains about 250 days a year. The tea leaves are harvested with scissors. Traditional harvesting by hand takes about three times as long. Here you can see the classic tea shoot with two and a half leaves. Back when we only picked by hand, this was the only part we'd harvest. The workers spend about eight hours in the field each day. Most tea plantations have been in the family for generations. My brother owns this side and my sister the other. These fields have all belonged to the same family or the same grandfather for generations. When they had children, they divided the fields and everyone got their own lot. This plant here marks the end of a field. A strong aromatic kind of black tea grows here in the mountains of Riza province. Two-thirds of the Turkish crop comes from this area. It's hard working on the steep, shadeless plantations. One sack can weigh up to 50 kilos. Trucks flit back and forth between the fields and factories each day. Tea leaves spoil quickly, so the quicker they are processed, the better. Weather permitting, this region can have up to three tea harvests between May and September. Artvin province lies on the border with Georgia. Many here belong to the Laz, a minority group who are mostly settled in northeastern Turkey. Biril Topololu is one of them. The musician plays the kemençe like no one else. It is the musical instrument of the Black Sea region. To me, the sea means freedom. I take my instruments, my kemençe, and play by the sea. I feel freer there, happier and more emotional. When I was young, I played my kemençe to the rhythm of the waves and sang my tunes, like this. The sound of the waves accompanies me. Lazy <laughs> 
Most songs on the Kemenche are about love. The 53-year-old musician plays them at all kinds of festivals, so the traditional melodies aren't forgotten. To Birol, the instrument perfectly reflects what it's like to live by the Black Sea. Our culture is characterized by the sea, the rivers, and the mountains. The weather here is fickle, just like the people. They all tend to change their mood quickly. The geographical location encourages that. People from the Black Sea are excitable, funny, sometimes a little irritable, but they calm down soon enough. The people who live here have their ups and downs, but they're always authentic. Have you started school? Yes, I have. And how's it going? Good. Did your teacher give you homework? Yes, I have to do some research. Research? The school year is getting off to a good start. Do you want me to play something for you on my kementia? There are some old tunes I've been singing since I was little. I grew up playing the kementia and singing the old songs. Everyone in my family carries on this tradition. But the tulum also plays an important role. We couldn't ever dance without a tulum. The tulum was originally a shepherd's instrument. This small bagpipe with its penetrating sound is an intrinsic part of folk music in northeastern Turkey. And it's said to have quite other qualities too. Muslim clerics in some villages once said the tulum was sinful. An old musician once told me that every note the tulum made was directly related to hell and that the notes beckoned, come, hell, come. I cannot cross the bridge to heaven. But so far, the tulum hasn't ever done me any harm. Preserving traditions while being open to the world. To Birol Topalolu, that's not a contradiction at all. Trabzon is about 160 kilometers west of Birol's village. Tonight, it's the site of an exceptional football match. The girls' team has been training for a match against the boys' team for a while. Now, Captain Jeren Kuvet and her team are finally ready. We have a match against the boys coming up, so of course I'm excited. And a little bit scared, too, because they are physically stronger. But we'll do our best and play as well as we can. If girls play against girls, we're equal, and it's easier for us. But when we play against boys, we realize that their strength and stamina are often greater. The game against the boys is a good way to test the team. The girls rely on their strong team spirit. But will it be enough to win? At first, they managed to withstand the opponent's repeated attacks and resolutely moved to the offensive. But then the boys shoot their first goal. And then, a second. The girls give it everything they've got. They get one goal back right before the final whistle, 
But in the end, the boys' team wins by one goal. In the beginning, we were too excited and made a mistake and we conceded a goal. After that goal, spirits in the team sank a bit, but we pulled ourselves together and scored. In the end, they won, but so what? We'll still keep playing football. Football brings people together. On the Black Sea, just like anywhere else in the world. The tea plantations leave unmistakable patterns on the steep slopes in the hinterland of the Black Sea coast. The Riza province is perfect for growing tea, mainly because of its high precipitation. Rains fall the heaviest between the sea and the Kachkar mountains. It makes this landscape particularly green and fertile. This is where Mehmet grew up. He returned here after his studies in Trabzon. In addition to cultivating organic tea, he runs a small guest house. From the age of two to nine, I spent my summers on my grandmother's pasture at the foot of the Kachkar Mountains. I never forgot how my grandmother and the mountain pastures smelled. Today, Mehmet is harvesting white tea. It is very valuable because only the top of the plant is picked. As you can see, we only take the topmost shoots. These are the freshest buds. We call it the golden needle. It takes around 30,000 hand-picked buds to produce one kilogram of white tea. White tea is made from the same plant as black and green tea. What makes it different is its gentle processing. Here you can see the three types of tea. This is black tea with two and a half leaves. This is green tea with smaller leaves. It is processed less. And this is white tea. It remains untreated. It's dried only with air circulation. A kilo of white tea costs up to 300 euros and is said to have healing and medicinal properties, lowering blood pressure, for example. Mehmet does not sell this precious tea. It's reserved for his private use and for guests at his eco lodge. When we finish the harvest and the tea has dried, we're always very excited to see how good the tea tastes and if it turned out well. Mehmet drinks many glasses of tea every day. He couldn't imagine a life without tea, without that comforting, warm feeling that spreads through your body. Now is a very special moment. How does this current harvest taste? This year's tea of the year is really good. I really enjoy drinking it. Tea is a Turkish passion and good business. Turkish people drink more than 200 liters per capita a year. In the fields, the third and final harvest of the season comes to an end. It's been a good year for the farmers. But not only does tea thrive in this special climate, so do hazelnuts. 
about 80% of the world's harvest is produced in the coastal mountains of the Turkish Black Sea coast, especially in the region around Giresun. The Byzantine castle Giresun Kalisi is the symbol of the city. It was built in the second century BC. Not far from the castle is one of the largest hazelnut factories in Turkey. More than 20,000 tons are produced by the Fisco Berlik cooperative alone each year. Hazelnuts account for about 70% of the regional economy. They have shaped the work of the people by the Black Sea, especially women, for centuries. First the hazelnuts are sorted and then roasted twice. This creates a special aroma. But before the nut is processed, chopped, pureed or pressed into chocolate, biscuits or ice creams, it is examined in the lab for its suitability. To many, working with hazelnuts by the shores of the Black Sea is a way of life. The same goes for Murat Karamatolu. <laughs> I even dream of hazelnuts at night. We are typical children of the Black Sea. We grew up among the bushes. After I became a food engineer, I worked in various factories, and hazelnuts became my profession. When the harvest season begins in August, the whole region is on call, and factory workers double up on extra shifts. But not all nuts are the same. Murat and his lab colleagues select which ones pass and which don't. We have a saying in Turkey, the best meat is fatty meat. Fat enhances the taste. And because our Girasun hazelnut contains over 60% oil, it's tastier than other nuts. The oil gives it a special flavor. Most hazelnuts are turned into sweets. By the Black Sea, they are very popular for tea or dessert. And of course, as a chocolate spread. Murat's colleague Yasemin Bozad raves about it. Chocolate makes you happy when you eat it. It releases endorphins. People love chocolate. But the hazelnut flavor is also important. It makes it taste even better. Murat's trained palate can distinguish the most subtle nuances. The Black Sea hazelnut is the tastiest nut in the world. If we eat the hazelnuts from Azerbaijan, Georgia or America and close our eyes, we immediately realize that they are not our nuts, because they just don't taste as good. Whenever I try it, I spoil my inner child. On the shores of the Black Sea coast, Hazelnuts are sometimes all it takes. For a long time, the fishing grounds of the Black Sea seemed inexhaustible until the environmental impacts of the past century made it one of the most threatened seas on Earth. Seven thousand years ago, the Black Sea was still a huge freshwater lake. Then a strait emerged, the Bosphorus the bridge to the Mediterranean. Since then, there have been two layers of water on top of each other. Above, the lighter fresh water from the rivers, and below, the heavy salt water from the Mediterranean. The fish stay in between both layers. Along the coast, one fishing village joins with the next. Tiribolu is one of them. 
directly in the harbour bay below the castle of Tiribolo lies the restaurant Yusuf Yeri. Yusuf Him, a fisherman and a cook, has been serving his guests here since 1992. Fish from the Black Sea is so delicious because the salt content in the water is so low. Each season has different types of fish. They alternate 12 months a year. For example, it's currently sea bass and tuna season. The turbot season is in April. Bonito and sea bass are available in August. Some fish even return from the Sea of Marmara in October. But like all seas, the Black Sea has been suffering from sustained overfishing for years. Yusuf therefore built up a second income for himself with his restaurant. When we grill fish, we have to be careful that the fish is well oiled so it doesn't stick. We want it to taste good, so it must be well grilled. His wife Chala helps him in the kitchen and with serving the guests. Yusuf, when we cook together, do we argue too? Unfortunately. Sadly, yes. Because sometimes we have different opinions. But you always have the last word because you're the chef. That's because I'm the expert. Women sometimes see things from a different perspective. Of course, you have your way often enough. I do what I can. Yes, indeed. Yusuf's father was also a fisherman, but his real passion is cooking. If the guests enjoy his food, then he's happy. Yusuf thinks up all the recipes himself, and of course, the absolute delicacy from the Black Sea is also on his menu. Now we're preparing the Black Sea's number one fish, hamsi, with its one-of-a-kind taste. We grill it, we stew it, we roast it and fry it. We would even eat it raw. Hamsi is the Turkish word for anchovy, and it is the most commonly caught fish in the Black Sea. It's also the only species that seems to recover again and again despite overfishing. In our childhood, the Black Sea was still full of fish. There are a lot less today. In my opinion, this is due to uncontrolled fishing. The more the technology has evolved, the fewer species there are. The big fish trawlers no longer catch 10 crates, they catch 100, and nobody stops them. The only fish we have enough of are anchovies. Overfishing is now considered the main cause for the dramatic changes in the Black Sea ecosystem. Nevertheless, coastal residents like Yusuf and Chala wouldn't want to live anywhere else. The sea and the people by the sea are unique. They're so capricious, sometimes stormy, sometimes calm, then effervescent. The people are just like the weather on the Black Sea. We Black Sea people are unique, and that makes us proud. The fishermen use the last rays of sun before nightfall to quickly snatch up the nets of the day. Who knows when the next storm will come? And it starts to rain again, as it so often does. About 250 kilometers west of Tiribolu lies Samsun, the largest industrial and port city on the Turkish Black Sea coast. 
More than a million people live here. Not far away, inland at Bafra, the landscape changes. Fertile soil and a perfect microclimate create perfect conditions for tobacco in demand the world over. Not only is tobacco good business for farmers, it also makes their soil more fertile. Grains grow better wherever tobacco was once planted. At the Bafra Delta, the Kuzulurmak flows into the Black Sea. The entire area is under conservation. Around 140 species of birds live in this special biotope. Around 100,000 waterfowl hibernate here in autumn and winter. Rare wild horses have also settled in the delta. And water buffalo are also in their elements on the lush summer pastures. This is one of many who settled in the flooded fields in the Kozalurmak. They all belong to farmers in the surrounding villages. There is a market twice a week in Bafra. Hatija Tash sells milk products from her buffalo herd here. Other traders sell homegrown fruit and vegetables from the fertile coastal region. Hatija has a regular stand at the market. I'm looking for buffalo yogurt. I've got some. Oh, great. It's fresh, right? Yes, I made it yesterday. It's fresh. And do you have butter? Yes, I've got butter too. What does a kilo cost? 30 lira. Yes, please. We sell everything made from buffalo. Homemade yogurt, cheese, butter, cream and buffalo milk. They're actually very low in cholesterol. I only sell products from my farm and my animals. Buffaloes give less milk than conventional cattle, so products made from their milk are comparatively expensive. Hatija earns around 150 euros on a good day at the market, which makes her monthly income above average for Turkey. It's my hard-earned money. I do everything myself and sell it on the market. I save the money for my pension and keep my farm with it. I'm very happy with my life. Hatija tends her farm alone. Today she got up at four o'clock to take care of the animals and drive to the market. This is the first chance she's had for breakfast. Her first customers were more important. We go to the market twice a week and meet. I always bring tea along. Whatever else we need for breakfast, we buy here. I enjoy eating with the others, and sometimes we also invite passers-by to join us. Night has settled over the Bafra Delta. Her teacher's buffaloes make their own way to the farm. Time for milking. The common water buffalo is a creature of habit and doesn't let anyone approach it, only her teacher. That's why the farmer's wife carefully milks all the animals by hand. A good water buffalo can produce between six and eight liters a day. The buffalo milk is very good because of the climate, the sea, and the green meadows. It all affects the buffaloes. Here, the environment is still all right. Mm -hmm. 
Her teacher makes the product she sells at the market in her kitchen. Because of its high fat content, buffalo's milk is longer lasting and more nutritious than cow's milk. One particular speciality is creamy kaimak. I've boiled the buffalo milk and poured it into bowls. It rests there for four hours until the cream settles. Then I put everything into the fridge. I'll scoop the cream off tomorrow morning and turn the rest into yogurt. After a busy day, Hatija has finally finished work. About 300 kilometers from Bafra, on the west side of the Black Sea coast, lies Amasra, a small harbor town the Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror called the Eye of the World. The conqueror of Constantinople and founder of the Ottoman Empire had the town built on this beautiful coast. Amasra is a peninsula at the front and an island at the back, connected by a bridge from the 9th century. Today, due to its location between Istanbul and Ankara, the coastal town is a popular destination for people from the two cities. There are no big concrete hotel blocks here, and Western tourists are still rare. In the streets not far from the harbor, traders offer traditionally handmade goods. Ali Riza Vatandashla made these wooden bowls and cooking utensils in his small workshop. His love of craftsmanship was passed on to him by his father. My father bought the lathe from an Armenian master in Istanbul in 1950. He worked with it for years and did everything with it. What a machine. I've been using it for years. If it breaks, I can even fix it myself. Ali is one of the last turners in Amasra who still cultivates the traditional craft. In the past, there were countless carpenters lining the streets. Now most of the goods are imported from China. The old lathes are increasingly being replaced by computer-controlled machines that manufacture the products automatically. Right now, I'm making little bowls for nuts. Six of them make a set. Since it's for nuts, I don't use any glaze. Everything stays natural. I can do four or five sets a day. It takes more time because everything is handmade. There are so many different things for everyday use we can make out of wood. Spoons, spatulas, picture frames, toothpicks and salt shakers, whatever you can think of. According to legend, an Egyptian galley brought woodcraft to Amasra 5,000 years ago. The workers from that ship passed on their knowledge to the inhabitants, thus establishing an artisan tradition that Ali still loves. I'm making a chestnut salad bowl. The first part is ready. I carved out the inside, and I won't use any varnish. Instead, I'll apply a polish made of shellac. It's made from beetles in India and is like raisin. By the way, shellac also has healing properties. When I cut myself, I put some on cotton wool and dab it on the wound. It doesn't leave a scar, and I never have to go to the doctor. I have more than 50 cuts on my hands, and not one is visible. Ali has spent his entire life by the Black Sea. But young people today leave small towns like Amasra and move to Turkey's big cities. Istanbul is located on the Bosphorus about five hours' drive away. 
The Bosphorus is a strait between Europe and Asia that connects the Black Sea with the Sea of Marmara. All shipping has to pass through it. Istanbul is home to around 14 million people. In addition, more than 10 million tourists come here every year. They all want to take in the sights and sounds of the more than 2,500 years of history. Once the greatest church in early Christianity, the Hagia Sophia is the city's main landmark. It's a risky endeavor for heavily loaded container ships to pass through the narrow and busy Bosphorus. Pilot stations at the entrance and the exit of the strait oversee traffic to help avoid accidents on the busy waterway. Ismini, Ismini, Istanbul pilot. Ismini, Istanbul pilot. Do you read me? Istanbul pilot, Istanbul pilot, this motor better, Ismini. Sirifnis, good morning, Captain. Uh, question, what is your freeboard? How many meters is your freeboard? I'm heading for Fenerbahce. But not all the traffic is guided hands-off via radio signal. Experienced pilots also board large ships and navigate them through the strait. Captain Nihat Turan is one of them. The Bosphorus is one of the most treacherous waters in the world, with a strong current. That's why we have so many safety precautions. Here, we plan how to steer the vessels based on their dimensions, draft and altitude. Our pilots are brought by boat to the ships that want to pass through the Bosphorus in one direction or the other. Even if there are technical aids nowadays, it's still safest to gauge things with your eyes. Captain Yusuf, you can head out with the boat. The Bosphorus flows into the Sea of Marmara at this pilot station. This is where Nihat's mission begins. The pilot has to steer a ship over 30 kilometers through the strait to the Black Sea. In some places, it is only 700 meters wide. When I get on the ship, the captain must be able to relax. We pilots must convey trust. You have to have experience to do it right. When I board a ship and the captain sits down and drinks coffee, then I've done a good job. The pilots take small dinghies to the big ships. They are told where to go about 20 minutes beforehand. Then they have to board ship in almost all kinds of weather. Only during very severe windy weather conditions is the Bosphorus ever closed. The Bosphorus is a one-way street. The direction changes every 12 hours. Right now, shipping traffic goes from south to north. And then it goes the other way around, never both directions at the same time. The cement freighter has a depth of four and a half meters. The really difficult thing for a pilot is boarding the ship and leaving later. Some ladders on the ships are up to 16 meters high, that is, from the waterline to the railing. Some of my colleagues have been killed in falls. Two pilots I knew myself fell off the ladder and died. Nihat's dinghy has reached its destination. The ship is loaded with raw materials. The current is at 4.5 knots. These are very difficult conditions to reach the Black Sea in. But first, the pilot has to get on board. Then, his main task waits for him up there. Captain Nihat must navigate the big ship safely through the Bosphorus despite heavy winds and a strong current. Back at the Bafra Delta, things are quieter here. 
Her teacher's water buffaloes are already grazing comfortably on the summer pasture. The milk that she boiled last night has already settled, leaving 60% cream on top. Here we have the buffalo milk cream, ready to eat. Her teacher skims off the cream. She'll turn the remains into yogurt later. If you haven't tried the cream yet, you don't know what you're missing. We call it kaymag, but it depends on how it's done. The taste is perfect and we eat it with honey or jam, but you can also enjoy it pure. We also have sweet dumplings here in the area. That's a typical speciality on the Black Sea coast. And a very calorie-rich treat too. But yogurt made from buffalo milk has less calories and is very rich in vitamins. I skimmed the cream off the buffalo milk, then I reheated it and added a bit of raw milk. Later, when everything cools off, I'll add a yogurt culture. Buffalo milk generally has less protein than cow's milk and is more digestible for people with allergies. A teacher thinks it is a delicacy whichever way it is prepared. The yogurt and the cream always taste very good. Fantastic! The people of the Turkish Black Sea coast are proud of their local products and of what nature offers them. Back in Amasra, woodworker Ali Riza urgently needs material for his production. He finds the best wood for his work in his own fruit and vegetable garden. He regularly plants new trees here. This is my garden. We've planted different types of trees here. If they're dry or sick, I cut them down. Behind us is a mulberry tree. We have crepe myrtle, pear and plum trees, and apple and fig trees. This garden is a special place to me. Here I can find peace. Ali takes all the wood he can gather. Sometimes during a walk by the sea, he also finds something special that he can use. was born and raised in Amasra. The 59-year-old likes to look back on his childhood. We're here by the Black Sea, where the waves are wild. This is the most beautiful spot in Amasra, and over there is Rabbit Island. We used to go there from this shore, jump in from that rock and climb up again, all day long. In the summertime, we got quite tan from the sun. We had good times here. Every year, about 55,000 cargo ships pass through the Bosphorus. It's a lot of traffic on the strait between the Marmara and the Black Sea. Pilots are stationed here to prevent possible accidents. They guide the big ships in all kinds of wind and weather through the waterway. This dinghy is just reaching the Black Sea to pick up one of its pilots. Captain Nihat has successfully navigated the large container ship 
through the Bosphorus. His mission is completed and he is heading back to the pilot station. There was a strong and dangerous current, but thanks to our experience, we passed through the Bosphorus. Wind is 4-6 right now. We'll let the ship take the normal route. Work for pilots like Nihad Turan is exhausting. They're responsible for the security on the Bosphorus. A shipwreck off Istanbul would be a disaster. This traffic goes on 24 hours, day and night, on public holidays and New Year's Eve. We work 365 days a year and give every waiting ship the service it needs. That's why we have to have pilots around the clock. The colleagues scheduled skip public holidays and weekends. But in spite of its demand, Nihat and his colleagues love their job and they love the sea and its coastal inhabitants. People of the Black Sea are as moody as the Black Sea itself. You never know what will happen. Many captains are afraid of the Black Sea. Some ships have made it over the ocean and then sunk in the Black Sea. When you're working on a ship, you're away from your home and your family. You have to love this work to do it. I love it, so I stayed with it. The Black Sea in the north of Turkey is wild and unpredictable, with shores full of wonder and richness. And that's exactly what its inhabitants love about it.